This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk a little bit about Taro and the Bitcoin Killer app. But before I talk about what Taro is, I just want to talk about why Taro matters and why you might want to watch this video. So Taro allows anyone to issue new assets, for example, stable coins on the Bitcoin blockchain, and then move them around the world using the Lightning Network. Lightning Labs, which is the company that developed this protocol, which is an open protocol, an open software protocol, Lightning Labs says that Taro is an important step in Bitcoinizing the dollar. That's their phrase they're using. Now, Bitcoin is already the world's most decentralized and secure network. Taro is one way of leveraging this sound and secure foundation to provide the rails for the world's economic activity. Michael Saylor has this great idea I've heard him talk about on a few podcasts for the Bitcoin Killer app. And basically this idea is the idea of a smartphone app that would be available globally to anyone and would allow anyone to do these four things. Store Bitcoin in a self-sovereign way, in other words, self-custody, holding your own private keys, spend Bitcoin on-chain or using the Lightning Network, and in the same app, in the same wallet, hold and spend US dollar stable coins and also hold, be able to hold and spend your local currency. So if you're in Argentina, for example, on your phone, you'd have Bitcoin, you'd have US dollars and you'd have Argentine pesos and you'd be able to use them out of the same app for whatever purposes you need them to. Such an app would be especially useful, useful for the billions of people, obviously, who have no access to banks, the globally unbanked. And it would also be especially useful for the billions of people who cannot trust their banks, which is basically everyone in the world with a bank account. The longer you get to know banks, the longer, uh, the less you like them. This Keller app would allow you to spend Bitcoin, US dollars, or as, as we said, or your local currency with anyone in the world, not just in your own country. And this would enable global trade and commerce at the speed of light. So I think it's a really cool vision. If you've never heard of the Lightning Network or you're wondering how it works, I'm going to link a video in the description notes below that you can watch before you watch this video. Before I move on, I just want to address a lie that's been circulated by altcoiners and it, it keeps popping up in my comments and on Twitter as well. And this lie is that the Bitcoin Lightning Network is vaporware. Nothing could be further from the truth. This is actually not true at all. In fact, there's currently $87 million dollars worth of Bitcoin sitting in Lightning Network channels. And these can be used because of how it works, how these channels work. This could be used to enable billions and billions of dollars of transactions. I'm also going to link to a map in the description notes below to show you what the Lightning Network looks like. According to this Lightning Network Explorer, there are over 18,000 nodes in 84,000 channels. And we can see that they're on every, uh, basically every continent on Earth. So the Lightning Network is one of the things that Taro is going to use. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, maybe leave a, leave a comment. So let's rewind a bit now that we've talked about why Taro is so exciting and talk about exactly what Taro is. Taro stands for Taproot Asset Representation Overlay. As we said, it's an open source protocol. It's open source software that was developed by Lightning Labs, which is a private company. Taro is made possible by the Taproot upgrade, which was a soft fork that we got in Bitcoin about a year ago, in November of 2021. Now what Taro does, which is so cool, is that it allows you to issue new assets, for example, stable coins or collectibles, which is what they call NFTs. It allows you to issue these new assets on the Bitcoin blockchain and then move them around, as we said, using the Lightning Network. One th great thing about this is it encourages more people to use the Lightning Network and then, and in this way, brings more liquidity to the Lightning Network. Another great thing about Taro is that it does not require a new blockchain and a new token. And it also doesn't contribute to Bitcoin blockchain bloat because of the way that it works. According to what I've read from Lightning Labs, you can view Taro assets as you, something similar to UTXOs, which stands for unspent transaction outputs in, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, they can be viewed, viewed as UTXOs that exist within a Bitcoin taproot UTXO, within a single Bitcoin taproot UTXO. And to issue an asset or multiple assets on Bitcoin using Taro, you need to only make a single taproot transaction on the Bitcoin blockchain itself. And this is one reason why it does not contribute to making the blockchain too large, which would, uh, which would, uh, 
detract from global decentralization because if it gets too large, not everyone can afford or has to know how to run a full node. So transactions like this are actually, if you fast forward, they're gonna be very important to generate transaction fees that pay Bitcoin miners even after the last Bitcoin is mined next century. Now thanks to Taproot, Taro transactions look just like regular transactions on chain. Taro uses a data structure called Merkle Sum Sparse Merkle Tree, MS, SMT for short. And if you understand these things and wanna dig deeper, I'm gonna to link to an article here about Merkle Sum Sparse Merkle Trees. And this is a, a fairly good explanation, but this is a little bit like the internet. You don't have to know exactly how it works in order to use it. To run Taro, you, or to run Taro, I should say, you need to be running a Bitcoin node and a Lightning node. So the nice thing about this, if country A, for example, wants US dollar stable coins for its population or a Taro version of its own fiat currency, it's gonna be necessary to set up lots of Bitcoin nodes and Lightning nodes in that country. And the really cool thing about this is this provides a very sneaky excuse to build out the Bitcoin infrastructure globally. So this is great for Bitcoin. It's great for Bitcoin adoption. And in this way, it contributes further to Bitcoin's reach and decentralization as you have more and more people running Bitcoin nodes and Lightning nodes because they want to run Taro. When the local currency or the US dollar eventually dies, then that infrastructure is going to be still sitting there and ready to be used for Bitcoin. Now, what are some possible downsides to Taro? First thing is it just may not have a good product market fit. The market may decide that it doesn't want it, in which case there's still other projects that we can talk about later in the works to bring about stable coins to Bitcoin or to use that, that phrase from Lightning Labs to Bitcoinize fiat. Other downsides, some people may choose to issue altcoins on Taro, of course. This is the big, the big downside. And we have to be aware of this, that if we give the world an open and permissionless protocol, as Lightning Labs has done, then people can do whatever they want with it and they could issue altcoins. The nice thing though, this will not contribute to Bitcoin blockchain bloat. So it's not, it's hard to see how this is an attack vector. I haven't thought through all of the different implications of Taro. So if you have ideas of how Taro could be mobilized or weaponized as an attack vector on Bitcoin, I'd be interested in hearing your ideas in the comments section below. I think we don't have to worry about competing altcoins running on Taro or Lightning simply because it's gonna be the best and the most sound money that wins, which is gonna be Bitcoin BTC. So I don't think Bitcoiners have much to worry about here. And the good news is that any altcoin activity on the Lightning Network or on Bitcoin, these taproot transactions, will also be putting money into the pockets of Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin Lightning node operators. Many people in developing countries are currently using something similar to uh, similar but not as robust or secure to Taro. They're using, for example, Tether USDT on Tron for the, as a US, US dollar stablecoin. And this opens them all up to the risks that come from, decentral, from centralization, the centralization that, that Tether has and the centralization that Tron has. It opens them up to censorship. It opens them up to getting rugged. And it also requires them, of course, to trust that Tether is fully backed by real US dollars, which it may or may not be. The fact that Tether hasn't blown up yet in this extreme crisis environment tells me that it probably is not going to, but you can never know when something is not completely transparent. And this is one reason that Taro will be much better. You'll be able to view everything on Lightning and on the Bitcoin blockchain. Stable coins built on Bitcoin are a much better solution than USDT on Tron. And Taro may be that solution that we've been waiting for to bring stable coins to Bitcoin. Now, the first version of the Taro daemon or daemon has been released as of September 28th, 2022. Developers can now mint, send, and receive Taro assets on the test network. So in other words, on testnet of Bitcoin, it's not on available on Bitcoin mainnet yet. And they're still working on bringing uh, the Taro protocol, integrating it with Lightning Labs implementation of Lightning, which is called LND. And so at that point, you'll be able to move these assets on the Lightning Network. So this is still very early, but this is not vaporware. This has been released. And if you're a developer, you can download uh, download the software and start playing around with it. I'm gonna to link to the announcement from Lightning Labs about this if you wanna dig a little bit deeper, as well as the builder's guide, guide, which is over on the engineering piece of their website. So Taro is definitely an interesting, interesting protocol. 
we're going to get a lot more visibility as it continues to grow. If you know about these things and want to give Lightning Labs feedback on Taro, I know they're quite interested in hearing, especially from developers who've played around with it. So be sure to contact them. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.